horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I will silver! Boy! The storm began as a deluge of fury so great there was an effort to stay in the saddle. The Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan Reed were drenched to the skin in less than a minute. They leaned low over the necks of their horses, fighting against the driving rain. There's a house of some sort just ahead. No other shelter near. Victor sure is a strong horse. He's keeping right with you. Victor will do his part, Dan. We can ask for shelter in that place ahead? Yes. Seems to be a barn in the back. We'll need it for the horses. You all right, Dan? <laughs> sure. I'm all right. He must have it. There's a woman in window. You see her? Yes. She's seen us, Toto. Head directly for the barn. We'll take care of the horses. Uh, Come on, silver old boy. Just a little swear. Come on, Victor. Oh, Silver, hold, hold, hold. hold, hold. I'll get the door open, Steady. We'll go right inside. Come on, Dan. Come on, Tonto. There. Get off your horse, Dan, and saddle. I don't support the people that own this place will find us coming in here like this. Oh, of course not. Uh-huh. Horses are plenty tired from fight against storms. As soon as I've unsaddled Silver, I'll go and see the people who own this place. Kimasabi, here come woman on the way here from town. Oh, I'm sorry. Golly, she'll be as soaking wet as we are. My sakes alive, I never saw such a storm in all my born days. I'm sorry you had to come out in it. I'm just going to your house and explain that we had to find shelter for our horses. Thunderation, you needn't explain. I saw you from the window and hoped you wouldn't be foolish enough to keep going. Uh, just a minute now, I'll uh, get this covering off my head and the rain out of my eyes. As soon as the storm lets up, you'll uh, be... You're masked. Yes, I always... And I left my rifle inside. Well, of all the nerve, why, you... That's it. Uh, draw a gun on an old woman. No, no. Here, I drew my gun to give it to you. I don't want you frightened because you're unarmed. Take it. I uh, sure as thunder will. Now get your hands up. Now that you have a gun, you needn't be afraid. I'm not an outlaw. There's a very good reason why I use a mask. Are you Mrs. Runyon? No, quick eye, ain't you? Saw my name on the wall there. Who are you, anyway? I never used my name. He's called the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Oh, my sakes alive, is that true? Yes, it is. And you, who are you? Dan Reed. My friend. Hmm. No, you're too young. My boy would be about 19 by this time. 
Your boy? But hold on. If you're the Lone Ranger, what am I doing holding a gun on you? Here, put this back where it belongs. Then come on into the house where I can find some dry clothes for Dan Reed. I'm all right. All right, my eye. You're soaking wet. Come on now. You too. No, no. Me stay here. Take care of horses. I'll stay here with Tom. I, uh, I want to speak to you, Lone Ranger. You've traveled a lot. Yes, quite a lot. And maybe there's a, just a chance you might know something of my boy. Will you come to the house where I can talk to you? That lad needs dry clothes and something warm for his stomach. Please come. All right, come then. I've put some of my husband's things out in the next room. Uh, go put them on, Dan. Oh, but I don't... Go ahead, Dan. <laughs> All right, then. You've been very kind, Mrs. Runyon. I wanted to ask you if you'd ever seen anything of my boy. He'd be around 19 by this time. I don't know. Oh, I've it seen... ain't likely you have. But I never missed the chance to ask about him. It's been 16 years since he was taken from us. When he was just three? Yes. But he's alive. I'm sure he is. I've been hoping that someday, somehow, he'd find out where I am and come home. There's a fortune for him. A fortune, a gold mine. Oh? It's in the mountains north of here. The Golden Nugget, it's called. I've heard of it. It's a good mine. But I didn't know you owned it. Oh, I'm not active. There's a man in town, uh, Mr. Scanlon. He's been a fine friend ever since my husband died. He's handled things for me, you see. Run everything and brought me the profit in cash. Uh, Mrs. Runyon, would you like to tell me about your son? The way he disappeared? Yes, I would. My husband and I went out every day to dig where he thought there was a rich vein. We worked at the side of a mountain and took little Tim along with us. Then one day, Ben let out a yell that could be heard a mile. I got it! Kate! I got it! I ran up to him as fast as I could. What is it? I yelled. I found it and there's no question about it. It's the real thing. The mother law. Oh, Ben, you, you're sure? Look at this. Look at this nugget. We're rich. Well, we didn't have long to feel glad because just then some men come riding from the gully. Adam, boys, close him! Claim jumpers. Tim! Tim! Get down behind the embankment, Kate. Quick! But, Tim, he'll be killed. I'll hold him off. <laughs> Got me yet. Quickly, grab the kid, boys. No. Oh, Ben, they've kidnapped him. They've taken Tim. Ben. Go to the sheriff, Kate. Show him the, the nugget. Make him witness your claim to the mine. And when he finds Tim, nothing can take it from you. It's yours now. Yours and the boys. Keep it for for Tim to work when he's grown. That was 16 years ago. I haven't seen Tim since. Gosh, didn't the men who ever kidnapped him ever ask for ransom? No, I, I think they knew the sheriff was hunting him for Ben's murder and it scared him away. Would you recognize your son if you saw him, Mrs. Runyon? Oh, yes, I know I would. You see, when Tim was little, he burned himself on the wrist while playing near the stove. It left a scar shaped like a crescent. Oh, golly, that ought to be easy to recognize. You, you haven't seen a young man with a scar like that? No, I, I'm sorry. I thought because you've traveled so much... I you're... want to do all I can to help you find your son. Oh, I hoped you'd say that. I've got a feeling Tim is somewhere in these parts. Wait! I'll pay handsome for your time and trouble finding him. That isn't necessary, Mrs. Runyon. I've, here, here, I've got all the cash you'll need for expenses. It's paper money and easy to carry. Oh, I don't want money. That'll take care of your expenses to start. I, uh, uh where did you get these bills? Why, well, same place I get all my money, from lawyer Scanlon. He handles my affairs at the mine and comes here once a week with my share of the profits. Oh? After Ben died, I needed money to work the mine, so I sold Scanlon one-third interest. But I'm retaining control of the golden nugget for Tim. I see. Is anything wrong? Mrs. Runyon, I'd like to borrow these bills for a short time. Oh, take all you want. But I... Uh... I'll explain later. Then help Tonto rub down the horses. I'm going on an errand, but I'll be back soon. Yes, sir. Been trouble in town lately. This money may be a clue to the man behind it. Sin. That's right, Mr. Scan. What's your name? Kid Carlson. Hank Weaver sent me. That's so? Where did you meet him? In, in jail. I was there for something I didn't do. The law punished me for nothing. Well, 
Now I'll be the man the law made me. What did Weaver tell you about me? Well, he said you were a smart lawyer, Mr. Scanlon, and that you'd show me how to make money without being jailed. Do I get the job? Uh, hold on, kid. If Hank Weaver did send you, like you say, he gave you something to show, ma'am. Gave me something? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot. Uh, have you got paper and pencil? Yes. Yeah. Uh, he told me to make a sign. A sign of the double cross. <laughs> You're in, kid. Well, shake hands with Mr. Quirt. Hiya, Ken. How do you do, Quirt? I guess Quirt's had no reason to complain about the way I've treated him, have you, Quirt? Nope. I don't know what I'll have for you, but I'll think it over. You'll do anything, huh? Anything. You can drop in later in the day. Meanwhile, if I think of something, I'll get in touch with him. You'll uh, be at the hotel, won't you? Oh, would if I had some cash. <laughs> uh, here, take this. It'll take care of you for the time being. Thanks. <laughs> well, Quirt, what did you think of the kid? Oh, he's strong and he's bitter at the law. He'll do murder if he's paid for it and feel that he's got a right to anything he can grab. I can use him to trade some of these counterfeit bills for good folding money. I'll send him on a trip with a supply of it. Yeah, good idea. It's hard to get the stuff in circulation. Well, we didn't pay much for it. We've already made a nice profit on the deal. You sure old Mrs. Runyon doesn't bank her cash? I know she doesn't. If she did, the bank would spot the cash as counterfeit. She won't bank it. Or spend it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm almost ready to break the news about the mine to her. Uh, she'll take it hard. What do I care? Well, storm's all done. Reckon I Wait. better... I think someone's in the outer office. Well, maybe the kid again. Yeah, put these bills on the desk. Get them out of sight. Just a minute. You're Scanlon? Uh, Mast. I'm a friend of Mrs. Runyon. Well, I, I don't understand. You gave her these banknotes. I, I want you to look at them. What, what's the matter with them? Don't you know? Hey, I don't know what you're talking about. Scanlon, you're either a thief or a fool. What do you mean? These bills are counterfeit. Co counterfeit? Why... I had no idea. That's what I intend to find out. No, see, here, you can't come walking into my office and accuse me of being a crook. I'm not accusing you. Yet. Does, uh, does Mrs. Runyon know the money is worthless? No, but she will. Well, I'll, I'll rectify the mistake right away. I'll see that Mrs. Runyon doesn't lose a thing. I've got my eye on you, Scanlon. Don't try any more mistakes. <laughs> The nerve of that masked coyote. Nerve is something that hombre's got plenty of. He's the Lone Ranger. Alone? Quit. We've got to move fast. If he tells the old lady the cash I gave her is counterfeit, we're hogtied. Oh, what do we do? Get your boys. Ambush him before he gets there. Won't work, Scanlon. That's all open country along the trail. He'll outride and outshoot us before we could lay a finger on him. There must be some way to stop him. Well, there is. Kid Carlson. That kid? Hank Weaver was his jailmate, and Hank recommended him. But how can one man stop it? There's a it? trap door in the roof of the old lady's house. Kid could make use of that to ambush the Lone Ranger inside. You mean... I mean the Lone Ranger will be off guard when he walks into the house. The kid can drill him before he says anything. All right. Go get the kid. You can show him the shortcut to the Runyon house so he can get there first. <laughs> Tonto and Dan had finished their attentions to the horses and were with Mrs. Runyon before the fire when the Lone Ranger entered the house. Here he is now. Mrs. Runyon, I have something to tell you. Oh, wait. He hear steps on stairs. Great day. Out of my way. Stop that gun. Come and get it. Oh, the wrist. Oh, look, the wrist he's holding. It's branded with a crescent. No, no, it can't be. I'm not through yet. Mrs. Runyon, he's got another gun. Stand back. Tim. Stand back, I tell you. Look out. <laughs> Curtain falls on the first act of tonight's Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. As Mrs. Runyon ran toward the outlaw, who was her son, two shots ripped in quick succession across the room. The old lady stopped suddenly in her tracks, then slumped to the floor. The Lone Ranger leaped across her prostrate figure to grapple with the outlaw. Take care of her, Tonto. Uh, Let me help. You bring water, Dan. Lift your hands. Uh, you got the drop on me. Well, the water's cold. Well, that fine. The, the old lady, she all right? I didn't mean to drill her. She stepped in my line of fire. Uh, she not hurt bad. Bullet only grazed forehead. Oh, I'm sure glad to hear that. You plenty lucky. Lone Ranger's bullet hit your gun when you fire. Make your shot go wild. Oh, oh. She's opening her eyes. Where? What? Oh, Tim. Tim, you've come home. You, you sure she's all right? She, she keeps acting like she knows me. She does know you, Tim. Tim? I don't savvy. This is Mrs. Runyon. You are Tim Runyon. What? I'm your mother, son. You, oh, you're local, all of you. My handle's Kid Carlson. I... I have no mother. You were taken from me when you were too young to remember, son. Outlaws kidnapped you and killed your father. Outlaws? How, uh, how long have you been alone, Tim? As long as I can remember. I see. Here, Mrs. Runyon, let me help you to a chair. Dan, uh, bring me the box in the drawer. Yes, ma'am. How old are you, boy? What? Well, I reckon I'm 19. That's just the age my Tim would be. I don't know what to say. Oh, don't say anything, son. You're home. That's all that matters. Tim, who sent you here to shoot me? Court Morgan. Scanlon's friend. Seems I was right. What do you mean? These bank notes which Scanlon gave you are counterfeit, Mrs. Runyon. Counterfeit? Why, I, I don't understand. Scanlon denied any knowledge of it. But I thought if he was lying, he'd try to stop me from telling you. Golly then you suspected from the first that you'd be ambushed. You mean all this cash, all the profits from the mine are, are worthless? Yes. Oh, Tim, it was your money. The mine belongs to you. It, it belongs to us, Mother. Why, the low-down skunks. They'll return every cent of it in hard case to you. They don't, Uncle That's down. not the way, Tim. We must prove that Scanlon and Court are passing the notes. Ah. Will you help? Help? Just tell me how. cabin, cunningly concealed in an arroyo not far from Broken Spur, Quirt Morgan sat at a rough table, dealing himself a hand of solitaire. Now and then his eyes flickered with amusement at Scanlon, who stood staring impatiently at the trail below. Pull up a chair and cool your heels, Scanlon. Kid will come when he's finished and not before. What if he doesn't come at all? Hmm? Then we'll have to figure a new way to get to the Lone Ranger. What the good it'll do. The old lady will know all the money I've paid her is fake. Well, what if she does? She can't prove you gave them to her. We floated a lot of phony cash around Broken Spur. Them bills might have come to her from a dozen sources. Just the same, I'd feel easier with that mask hombre six feet under. <laughs> you ain't the first who said that. Someone coming out. Yeah, but who? Hit it the kid? No. Boys wouldn't have no reason to give him a personal escort all the way up from the trail. Surrounded by Quirt Morgan's renegades, a tall man, dressed in rough, nondescript clothes, strode toward the cabin. His face, too, was unfamiliar, for it had been cleverly disguised. To the outlaw and the lawyer who watched his approach from the cabin window, the features of the lone ranger were unrecognizable. Stranger to see you, Quirt. Down in town, down on the trail. It's your handle, stranger. Names don't mean much, west of the Pecos. Suppose you call me Slim. What's your business? Whatever comes my way. <laughs> as long as it shows a dollar sign, you ain't particular how you get it, huh? I have a message for you. Well, I'm listening. And it's this. Oh, the double cross. Yeah. Came from Hank Weaver. Hey, what do you know, Scanlon? Another one of Hank's mates from the territorial prison. Maybe he knows Kid Carlson. Yeah, I do. Or Slim... There's only one ticket to a berth with me, and that's a quick trigger and a cool eye. Like, uh, parting that leaf in the middle. <laughs> Think you can qualify as one of my gun waddies, mister? 
I think so. One of the stranger's guns cut that deck of cards. And the other drilled one of the cards from center while it was in the air. You're in, Slim. Good. It's him. It's a kid. Back to your post, boys. Did you get him? Did you drill the Lone Ranger? You wanted proof. Here. Quit. Quit. Look. The Lone Ranger's mask. You really slicked that hombre for keeps? How else would I get his mask? The kid's right, Scanlon. Lone Ranger would have to be drilled permanent for he'd surrender that. What happened to your wrist? Oh, one of his bullets grazed me. Let me see. It... The crescent. What's the matter? That burn. The kid is Mrs. Runyon's son. What? She's been trying to locate a kid with that mark for years. But... Wait a minute. How do we know the kid is on the level about drilling the Lone Ranger, Quid? You he mean... He's supposed to have ambushed him in his ma's own house, ain't he? And the Lone Ranger and the old lady are friends. Ah. Maybe he didn't drill the critter after all. Maybe that mask was given to him to bring back here to convince us the hombre was dead. Why? No, you don't, Quirt. Last year, you got a drop on me. That's what you hired me for. A quick trigger man. He won't trouble you again. Nice shooting, Slim. Yes, drilled the gun right out of his hand. Take him into the cabin. Now, tie him to that chair. Yes. Well, this settles it quit. What? I'm making that last trip of the mine cash to Mrs. Runyon right now. Ah, you better wait till I see if I can make the kid talk. The Lone Ranger's still I alive. I can't wait. Anyhow, I thought of a way to take care of that mask coyote. Oh, yeah? I'll go to the house alone with the counterfeit cash as usual. If the Lone Ranger's dead, as the kid would have us believe, everything will go as planned. He will own complete control of the golden nugget. Well, what if the Lone Ranger's there alive? You and the boys will follow a short distance behind me. If I don't come out in five minutes, come in and get me. Oh, I savvy. We'll give that hombre more than he bargains for. What about the kid? <laughs> I'm giving him a warm reception of his own. He knows too much. You mean... Slim! Yeah? Scanlon and me have a little business to attend to. Mm-hmm. After we're gone, douse the cabin with coal oil. Put a match to it. But drill the kid first. Why don't you drill him and be done with it? Because I don't aim to leave any trace of that crescent brand. Slips like that are what put necks in a hang noose. Some time later, the renegades, led by Scanlon and Quirk, guided their horses slowly through the sandy bottom of the narrow ravine. Meanwhile, in the cabin they had left, the man they knew as Slim rapidly loosened the ropes which bound Kid Carlson to his chair. Careful. Uh, we'll have to hurry. If Scanlon lays a hand on my mother, I'll, I'll kill him. Don't worry. Scanlon won't show his hand until Mrs. Runyon exposes him. Yeah, but when that happens, Quirk and his gang will rush the house. Steady. Right, easy. That's why we've got to hurry. The gang barricade themselves in the house. Well, your mother and others may be hurt. Steady. One minute. Steady. There. Now you're free. Let's go. Oh, wait. What's the idea of shooting out the window? Quirt left orders for you to be shot. Oh, I savvy. What about the fire? Just a minute. Help me sprinkle this coal. All right. Some more over there. I'll get it on this side. Some on the other side. I got most of this over here. Yeah, I got about all I can get out of this. Well, that's enough. I won't have any trouble getting this old shack to burn. The boards are so dry and brittle, they'll burn like kindling. Yeah, that's what we want. You see, Scanlon and Quirt will be sure to see the flames. Yeah, and when they do, they'll figure it's the end of Kid Carlson. Won't they be surprised? Yeah, they sure will. Just a minute. Hand me that match. Yeah. Stand yeah. clear. Be careful. This coal oil will flame up. There she goes. Come on, we have work to do. Well, Scanlon, what are you standing there gawking for? Did you bring the money or didn't you? I, 
Why, of course, Mrs. Runyon. I have it right here. Huh? Is that genuine? I don't know what you mean. Here, there's been a lot of worthless paper money passed in town. A body can't be too careful. Oh, you don't have to worry about these bills, Mrs. Runyon. They're the real thing. I made sure of it myself. Why, oh, you ornery, low-down, thieving polecat. This cash is as crooked as you are, and you know it. What? You've been passing that worthless paper money on me for more than a year, while you've been swindling me out of the real cash profits from the mine. All right. Now you listen. I bought control of the mine with the cash you had coming today. You bought control. You couldn't do it. You couldn't buy the mine unless I sold it to you. No? Well, don't forget the paper you signed, giving me the power of attorney to transact business in your name. Every time I sent you cash, you signed a receipt for it. I can show that those receipts were for payments made on the purchase of the mine. Reckon that's all uh, I need to hear, Mrs. Runyon. Sheriff. You've had me chasing circles trying to figure who was behind them phony bills, Scanlon. But that loose tongue of yours has talked your way into a jail cell. Quirt, drill him, the sheriff. What? I've been waiting for you, Quirt. You and Scanlon are going to be seeing a lot of each other from now on. Behind bars. Why, you addle-headed old coot, I've got my boys with me. They'll riddle you before they'll see you. Quirt, that ain't your boys. You're doggone tootin' it, ain't Scanlon. That's my posse. The whole caboodle of you is ridden right into a trap. Out of my way, sheriff. I'm going with you, Quirt. You're staying put, Scanlon, unless you want lead through your dead ratted hide. Quirt. I'm pulling snipe. No, you're not. Good hunting, Tim. Kid, I, I thought you... And I went up in smoke along with your cabin, eh, Scanlon? The Lone Ranger got me out of that. The Lone Ranger? Yeah. You know him better as Slim. Oh, Slim! you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.